So let's define some of the differences between the two paths. On the natural love path, the spirits say to themselves that they are God. They get to a point of intellectually telling themselves that because God created them and God created you and God created me and God created the flowers and God created the plants, that that means we are all one and that that means that I am also God. How many of you have had that feeling or that thought pass through? In, in the past, probably lots of you, right? And have contemplated that as a possibility, right? Well, when you're on the divine love path, you say, I am God's son or daughter, of course. I am God's child. Can you see the difference? One recognizes that God is an entity with whom you can communicate. The other one says, I don't need to communicate to God because I've already got. Can you see why there would be a problem with receiving God's love if God is an entity outside of yourself with that method? What if you said, I am God and I care, I am capable of the qualities of God? Oh, you're certainly capable of the qualities of God, but only under one condition, and that is divine love entering your soul. Without the divine love entering your soul, you will only ever be a human soul. And in fact, there are many millions and so billions of spirits in the sixth sphere who are in that state. Where they have yet to, they intellectually believe in God, and they intellectually think they're doing all the things that God would want them to do, but they do not have an emotional relationship with God. And so you could literally go along the path to get, and it could take you to the point to opening up to receiving divine love. Yes. Because I believe that's the process of the interest. Yes, yeah, no, that's what happens is that you can transfer, if you like, between paths at any time. Mm -hmm. Stairway to Heaven's a lovely song, right? You like Stairway to Heaven? Mm -hmm. Yes, there are two paths you can go by. But in the long run, you choose the path you're on. A lot of songs are actually channeled, right? Mm -hmm. there, are, there are two paths you can go by. One of these paths is the natural love path. Yeah. <clears throat> and that's the path I'm trying to talk about because, to be honest with you, the majority of people on earth are on that path. Right? Now, some have received divine love into their soul, but they're still trying to intellectually sort out the truth from the falsehood, right? And you cannot sort out the truth from falsehood intellectually. God's truth comes to you via emotions, so you will not be able to intellectually determine truth. It can help you to see truth emotionally, but it's only when you actually feel the truth that you will change. For example, how many of you have given up smoking? Quite a lot, eh? How many attempts did you have to give up smoking? One. One? How many had more than one? Two, three, four, so a fair, fair majority. Right. <laughs> when you gave up smoking, it was because you had a pure desire at some point to do it. Up until then, you thought you wanted it, but there were emotions that were driving you to continue smoking, weren't there? And it was only when you started feeling the need to give up emotionally that you gave up. <coughs> And what I'm saying is it's the same with receiving divine love. You cannot intellectually do this process on this path. You can on this path. So this path is very intellectual. <clears throat> Whereas this path is very emotional. So what would be some examples of some people on earth who have been influenced by six fierce spirits? Um, almost every religious format today is influenced by six fierce spirits. Because almost every religious format wants to define God their way. Do they not? So therefore, every religious format pretty much is influenced by spirits who want to define God their way too. 
So there's very few that connect you with God emotionally, and that becomes the definition. We'll talk about some of those things later, perhaps. Let's keep going on this. What's some other things that happen? Oh, yeah. That path's very self-reliant. This path is... <coughs> the only reason why most of us can't learn to trust God completely is because we have an emotion of mistrust within ourselves. What have you written down there? Uh, that's called God-reliant, sorry. And that's self-reliant. Sorry, you just have to tell us that too. So, um, self-reliant is um, based on distrust and God-reliant based on trust. Self-reliant is based on I only trust myself. Yeah. God-reliance is based on I, I trust myself and I also trust this being, this relationship that I have with this being that's outside of myself. You can see you're going to have to work through all your trust issues to have a relationship with God. How many of you got trust issues? How many of you don't trust anything I'm saying? <laughs> I don't blame you. But if you don't, it's because there will be a feeling of self-reliance in you. Where you have a fear of what I'm saying. What's he trying to do? Does he want me to follow him? Does he want me to pay him money? You, you know, all those different things, right? That's what comes up inside of us sometimes because we don't trust. We don't trust. The beauty of the law of attraction is you're here because you, your soul wanted you here. The law of attraction operated for us to meet. Didn't it? So if that's the case, then you're here for a good purpose. And that is your soul to grow. Even if it's a negative experience and I'm a charlatan, it's going to help us all grow. Right. Can you see the difference between the two paths? There's many more of things I can mention. Now, the natural love path will enable you to grow in your love of inside that comes from inside of you. But you will only be able to grow it until the sixth fear of love. In other words, once you become perfect in the way you display the love that comes from inside of you, you will be in the sixth sphere, whether you're here on earth or you're a spirit, doesn't matter, you will be in the sixth sphere in terms of your condition. Is there anyone who's got there while on earth? Uh, there's no one on earth currently, oh sorry, there's no one on earth currently just in the sixth sphere condition. Has there ever been? Um, yeah, in the first century I was in a greater condition than the sixth sphere. Anyone else? Uh, no, <coughs> not on earth. There's millions of spirits in that condition. Billions of spirits. Is so if we've got no one, like, how do we find all this out? Like, there's no one there that's got this love. How are we going to teach it to someone? God wants to teach you directly. In other words, God wants a personal communication link from you to Him. And He wants to teach you all truth. Now, what you need to know is how to make that link happen. Yep, and that, that's the problem that most people on earth face today is they don't know how to make the link happen. But once that link occurs, you will learn the truth directly from God. You won't need anyone else to tell you. Are you saying once all the emotion pain starts to be released, you're open to... Well, you think about the only reason why you do not establish a relationship with God right now is because there's emotions within you that prevent the establishment of that relationship. So, of course, it's going to result in you needing to release some emotions that, that you're basically, many of you at the moment are saying, some, you know, some of you have received some of divine love, yes, you know you have. So, but many are saying, no, no, I don't want to go any further because this is starting to get a bit scary for me. Or, no, no, I don't want to go any further because I have to live in truth if I go further and I don't want to live in truth. For example, let's say you were in a, in living in an abusive relationship 
Do you think God wants you to live in an abusive relationship? Is living in an abusive relationship in harmony with love of yourself? Yes. No. Now, now, if you're going to receive more divine love, you're going to have to get out of your abusive relationship. But there's many reasons why a person won't. Financial, fear of fa family or friends, criticisms and so forth, right? They're all emotions they're going to have to firstly release and deal with before they'll leave that partnership and before they can connect with more of love from God. Do you see how it works? We often block the flow of love from God because we don't want to change here. We don't want to change our lives because we're afraid here. And the key is to get over that and start processing those emotions of fear and release them. Then we will grow. So it's our fear-based mind filters that are blocking our and a lot of fear comes from your soul, remember, but it's an error. See, this is why fear is so debilitating sometimes, because it does come from an emotional state. You think about it, all the times you've been terrified in your life. It feels like an emotion, doesn't it? And you just run, don't you? Like, How many of you have been so terrified that you just sort of like a, a dog that wet itself sort of thing? <laughs> and just frozen in fear. I've had that state myself, where I'm just frozen in fear. We often are frozen in fear in our lives. Yeah. And that prevents this connection. Remember, fear is in disharmony with love. Well, if a person doesn't think that they've got this fear, then they're quite sure that they haven't got emotional upsets or the what is what you're describing as fear. Well, how can how can someone else say, Oh, you only think you have it, but you really have? How do you find that out? And you find it out through the law of attraction. The world is bringing to you exactly what your soul condition currently is. So if right at the moment you're experiencing negative, what you feel are negative events, then it's because your soul condition, your emotions have attracted them. Right? So that tells you the truth. Yeah, but supposing that's not the case. If you're quite happy with the way things are, then you seem to be attracting them. All right, there's another thing that's going on. Do you feel God's divine love flowing through you every hour of every day? You know, constantly. Well, I don't know. You know what, what to expect that to feel like. Well, well, I can tell you, you know what it feels like when you feel it. So if you're not feeling it, there's a reason for it not happening. That makes sense, doesn't it? God would give it to you if God could give it to you. But if you're preventing it here at the emotional level, then it won't flow. Yeah. God doesn't withhold things. It's us that prevent things. Yeah. So we can tell ourselves that we're happy, and that's fine. There are six fear spirits in the six fear who are beautiful. They, they classify themselves as beautifully happy. We're actually going to talk to a six fear spirit this afternoon who, who is now in this divine love path above the eight sphere. And she will talk to you about how her feelings were in the six fear. And she was very detuned from her emotions at that stage. She believed she had none emotions, no emotions to work through. She believed that. Is that because they were so numbed down, she didn't feel it? Suppressed, yeah. We can suppress our emotions to such an extent that we believe we don't have them anymore. In fact, it is one of the major ways that we suppress our emotions, is to tell ourselves that we don't have them anymore. Yeah. I had that exact experience. I didn't believe I had any of those emotions, especially fear and, and all those. And, and I listened to you for two months, and it was all intellectual. Yeah. The law of attraction started pushing buttons, and I felt it. Yeah. And so, what are you feeling now, Dennis? Well, was, well I just you feel the emotions, emotions flowing yeah. now. That's it. We just move on. Yeah. Yeah. But still scared. We move on. Yeah. But there, no, there's things coming up that you thought you didn't have. Yeah, yeah. 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 We, we can. T you're, you can exercise your mind very powerfully. Your mind is a powerful tool, but it's only a tool. If you let the mind dominate you, you are going to find this path the easiest. If you start letting the soul dominate you, the emotions dominate you, you will get, find this path easier. The key is you can make the choice whenever you want. I'm not decrying this path. It still results in progression. It still results in you at some point being perfected in the way you display your love. 
that you'll never get above the sixth fear in the, in the spirit world when you pass if you do not follow this other path. But the first and easy path can lead you to open up to the soul. Yes, totally, totally. These paths are not separate in nature. You can, you can find one or the other any time. The problem is that many stay on the way they've progressed before. So many of you will feel like, well, you know, what AJ is saying to me seems pretty outlandish. For goodness sake, the man thinks it's Jesus, you know, and then he's going to tell me these things. You know, I can't trust that, right? And so you will stay on the way you've been progressing, and that's okay. But I'm telling you, there is this other way, and it is available to you. And many who have listened to me for some time have started to experience it and have started to understand that way. So I was just going to say that when I first met you, I was firmly planted on the natural love path for about 20 years. Yeah. And whatever you said made sense, so I wanted to try it out. Yeah. And the moment I set my intention on you know, the divine love path, everything worked much faster. Yeah. More painful, but much faster. Yes. Yeah. Much, much faster. Here we sort of numb ourselves to pain. Here we allow our pain to exist and be experienced. Do you want to know what's above? <laughs> There's the seventh sphere. And the seventh sphere is a unique place. And it's also a very unique place when you experience it on Earth as well. Because in the seventh sphere, you no, you no longer use your mind anymore. Everything comes from your emotions. Everything comes from your feelings. Right? And you're learning to not think and worry and stress and all those other things anymore. Right? But you are fully involved in everything around you emotionally. So you are not detuning. Not, it's not like the Buddhists would say to you about reaching nirvana is a process of, what did they normally suggest? Any of you tried those experiences? Detachment. They normally suggest detachment. It's not a process of attachment. What I'm saying on the divine love path, you will become attached to everything. What do you think mean, being at one with everything means? Doesn't it mean being attached to everything? But you will not have any feelings that are disharmonious with love in that process. And that's what you're learning in the seventh sphere. And then, above the seventh sphere, and the first transition into the eighth, you become. Oh, here we go, another heart. I'm going to tell you some things about the Bible because. You know, these things I mentioned in the first century, right? Some of them are written in the Bible, and this is one of them. In the first century, I had a discussion with a man called Nicodemus. And Nicodemus was a religious leader at the time. And I talked to him about the soul's transition from the seventh sphere into the eighth sphere. And I, and I talked to him about it's like being born again. It's being born from a human soul into a divine soul or an angel. You've heard the term angels. Angels exist above the seventh sphere. And every one of you can become an angel. Right? And it can happen here on earth. It can happen here on earth, yes. You can do it while you're alive here on earth. You'll see that happen in the future on earth. Part of the big world transitions that are happening through this 2012 thing is all about this. Most people on earth are not aware, but it is all about what's going to happen in terms of people, groups of people like yourselves making the tr final transition into, it's not a final destination, but it's a transition into the state of being born again while they're alive here on earth. Sorry? Born again? No, no, I don't mean born again. I'm not referring, I'm referring to the soul, not the body, for a start. The soul, 
tr is transformed into a new type of soul. Because it, so much of divine love has entered that soul that it transforms the soul into a new type of soul. A soul that now is conscious of its own immortality. A soul that is able to do very many powerful things that are not available to it before then. And it's a soul that's also now at one with God. So what happened with Nicodemus? And um, he, he didn't understand what I was talking about. He, he understands now. He's in the celestial spheres. But in the first century, he didn't understand what I was talking about. And what happened? Um, he was a Pharisee. So he was involved, in fact, with the decisions about my execution. And, uh, and then he passed into the spirit world. And slowly, he found the divine path because he was always interested in, in talking to me. And he made that transition. So he is now up there at one with God. Is this what the so-called modern spiritual world talks of this liberation? In liberation. Liberation. And I would say that when you're at the state of net perfected natural love, you are liberated from sin, or you're liberated from disharmony with natural love. At that point, you feel free. In other words, you feel like your free will is able to be exercised completely. However, because you haven't received divine love, you're not truly liberated. So there's a lot of terminology that's used today, and most of it comes from spirits in the sixth sphere trying to understand the divine love path intellectually. In other words, you've heard of the term at one with God, right? Pretty much everyone would have heard of that. Yeah? And most people, I've talked to many people who are on this path who think they're at one with God. But it's not a thought. Being at one with God is not a thought, it's a condition. Right? So the thing to realise is that almost everything that's told to you today is told through emotional filters between spirits and here on earth. And on top of that, the majority of things are taught through wanting to intellectually understand something that will never be intellectually understood. Maybe I can give you an example. Can you tell me what love is, intellectually? You might spend, what, a week telling me all about love, right? But if I never experience it, will I understand? So what do I need to do? Experience it. Feel it. Feel it. And this is what I'm saying to you. Many of the spirits in the natural love path, people in the natural love path, have not experienced anything that they're talking about. They have come to believe it intellectually, but they are not experiencing it emotionally. When you experience it emotionally, you will find this path. So is, uh, if you go through the intellectual path and then actually evolve or whatever, transition into the um, divine love yep. path, then do you have integration of mind and no, it's the integration of the intellectual and the experience. No. Does it come together? Or? The mind is a tool just like your yeah, arm is a tool. It's just a tool to bring you So what happens is instead of becoming mind dominant, see at the moment many of us are mind dominant, right? Yeah. What that means is this tool that should be just used as a tool from our soul, from our heart, has become so dominant that it dominates our heart. It tells us what to do. And it's the wrong way around. But what you will learn on this path is to become opposite, the opposite of that, which is heart dominant, emotion dominant. The, spir the spirits who are perfected in natural love are mind dominant. The spirits who are perfected in divine love, which happens in the eighth sphere, are heart dominant. They're passion dominant. They desire. They haven't suppressed their desires. They have all of their desires. But their desires are harmonious with love. 